Next up is super exciting, Jamila Jamil, who you guys probably know as an actress and actress. And if you've been paying much attention to the media lately, you will know her also as an activist and an entrepreneur in that she founded iWay. And that is an organization that is making a ton of change in terms of how we contemplate our strengths and our identities. So she's funny as fuck, and also it's the only, The Good Place is the only show my entire family can watch together from age nine up to age 52. Might say something about our weak, weak skills in parenting, but that's all we can get our kids to sit down for. Um, anyway, cool, so Jamila Jamil, can you talk about, yes, just like do something weird like you do. <laughs> What was your gateway to, to using your platform for good, or your platform to raise awareness around issues of health? Oh, uh, I was nationally fat shamed uh, by the media for f about six months uh, because I'd gotten a huge job on radio and I'd made history as the first woman to ever uh, host this big show on the BBC Radio One. And in my first three, thanks. Uh, and in my first three months, my figures went up by two hundred thousand uh, people which is great and a wonderful triumph for me as a woman in that role. And the newspapers decided to not report my triumph. They just reported that I'd gained three dress sizes and photographed only pictures of me bending over or somehow midair. Um, and always uh, just of my ass and my thighs, there would be photographers sitting outside my house all night and all day uh, calling me a fat C word uh, to my face in the hopes that I would either cry and then they'd have a photograph of a bigger woman looking sad because they love that narrative. They don't understand that you could be happy and sexy and having loads of great sex, which I was, uh, at any size. Um, or they were hoping that I would attack them. Uh, so after that, I think it was the first time I'd ever really experienced that. And it's actually kind of a shame that it took me being singled out like that to make me want to get up and fight, but it made me aware of something that I saw there was something really wrong with and it made me want to begin my activism. So I started speaking out, this is about six years ago, and uh, I spoke to the ha at, at Parliament in front of the House of Commons. I started speaking to advertising agencies and I released three plus size clothing lines and it was actually the, the most successful year of my career. So fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was, yeah, my activism was six years ago. The worst part about this is that I've been talking about all of the same things for six or seven years. And while I did get some, some uh, attention from doing that, and people were starting to listen to the things that I was saying, it wasn't on the scale that now, when I've lost weight, because I've come off the medicine that made me gain weight in the first place, now that I'm slimmer, people are listening to the same thing I've been saying for six fucking years. And that is the biggest problem with the fact that we don't listen to the body, positivity, uh, the body positive activists because when a bigger woman speaks out against the way that society and this industry and the media and everyone around us shames us, you just call them jealous and bitter. And you kind of victim blame them and make them feel like they're a failure. But suddenly a slender actress on an NBC sitcom says it and everyone acts like it's the first time they've ever heard it. And I know that there are so many people who think that, not so many, but some people definitely who think that I am taking over a movement that isn't mine, but I've been talking about this for years, and this is something that I will talk about until it's gone, and that's what I weigh is all about. It's gone, I think that's what we have to, and that's a long time, usually. <sighs> we have to talk for a very long time to make impact, and we appreciate that you do that. And, there, there's criticism in pretty much everything. It's debate, it's conversation. How do you, you, you get, <laughs> I don't want to say backlash, but there's a little bit of angry Twitter. Does it bug you? Does it vex you? Are no. you like, whatever? No, most people's criticisms of me, I think when people say that I'm too slim to speak out for body positivity, I think there is a flaw in that. Because as I was saying before, if when you are bigger, you speak out about it, they say you're too jealous and bitter to speak out about it. And then if you're slim and you speak out about it, then they're saying you're too pretty or you're too thin to talk about it. So then who the fuck gets to talk about it? What a genius way to silence all of us. You need the people with a platform to speak out because unfortunately these are the people who get listened to. And the most important thing, and this is the thing that I'm doing more and more with my activism is making sure that I use the platform that I have to uplift other activists, the ones who are doing the work and, and to pass the mic and share that limelight that I now have with the people who've been doing this work for decades 
before I came along. That is what Blog Her is about. We mm -hmm. created a platform for women who are making content. We don't edit the content, we promote the content, we mm -hmm. amplify the content, we respect and hope to help the content make a shit ton of money. That's what we do. We find the women, they find us, who have something to say. And I will say, Jamila was one of the first people to RSVP yes to speak here, which is, this is, no one gets paid to speak here. Um, and I find this so scary. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> terrifying. So, um, and no one gets paid. It's, uh, no one gets like only green M&Ms in the nice janky room on the other side. But that's how we keep this an affordable conference. It's uh, not a, f it is not specifically for profit. It's for social change. So everything that uh, you're doing is deeply respected by um, our company's mission. And that was just not a question. That was just a cool thanks. <laughs> um, um, so there you go. Um, okay, so. We, what other, okay, with regard to women's health. Oh, we've lost one. We did, she was like, fuck her. She just loves dude, flat tummy dude, tea. I talk too long. <laughs> I talk too long. No, tummy tea? No, go on. <laughs> one of the things I love most about your platform is you are not, you are pre seem pretty unabashed about going after corporations. I have and, no idea what you're talking about. Come on. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. You were just primping with your green M&Ms when that topic came up. Um, so I feel like, yeah, you're like taking down the big... The ones who have the power to change, to create and sustain stereotype. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a very aggressive movement against us. Advertising, media, the shaming, the fear-mongering. Like, I have enough fucking things to be afraid of. Like, I'm afraid of rape. I don't want to be afraid of an armpit vagina, which is the line of skin that's in your armpit. Like, what life is... is share me... What like, is it's like the bit of skin that, like, where your armpit is, like, lumping up on it and it looks like a pussy. Like, it's... <laughs> I, I'm afraid of not being given equal opportunities because I'm a woman of color. I'm afraid of so many other things. I'm afraid of just being murdered for being a woman. Like, I don't want to worry about stretch marks or cellulite or time or gravity showing on my face and my body. These things are deliberately there to go full tin hat on you. They are here to distract us to give us something else to think about so that we're not thinking about growing our businesses and our families and our lives and our hearts and our minds. And so some, it's so aggressive how pervasive it is and how it's everywhere, it's all around us. We're constantly being shamed. It takes someone and something aggressive to tear that down. And all I'm really doing is calling it out and showing it to everyone. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that's been the most amazing thing about the last couple of years of realizing that Oh no, not shame on me. Shame on you for making me feel so bad about something that men are rarely made to feel bad about. You know, we photograph men in HD on the front cover of magazines because their wrinkles are so sexy and so dignified. And we, we, uh, we love a dad bod. We love a dad bod. Hello, Mark Ruffalo. But where's the mum bod, love? Like, what's wrong with what, what the, you know, the snapback? Fuck the snapback. You made a human being. You're a fucking miracle. Like, I don't remember what I was talking about, but I know I said fuck a lot. <laughs> In down corporations. Yeah, sorry. So, like, you know, we, we don't give men this thing to worry about. So men are able to get on with their day. They sleep more than us. They don't wake up early to do their hair and their makeup. They, they uh, don't think about food all the time. They don't, they're not afraid of food. They eat enough food. Uh, we're just... What are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? And I didn't know, and I was doing it. And I was, I'm not judging anyone. Like, I was anorexic for years as a teenager, like, completely anorexic. Uh, I have, still have body dysmorphia. I still can't see my own, like, image in the mirror. Uh, I have spent 20 years of my life being afraid of food until maybe the last three years after I had a therapy called EMDR therapy. Write that down. EMDR. It's for all kinds of different traumas, and I believe all women should just have it, because <laughs> um, it's traumatic being a woman. But I have suffered, I've lost enough of my years of my life to this shit, to feeling like I need to be fixed and corrected and like I need to be enough. We are all enough and we have so much that we can contribute to this world and our time is being used where it doesn't belong, which is in becoming this fantasy teenage sex doll version of Angelina Jolie. I say yeah. no. Boom. There you go. That's what you need to know. Tweet the fuck out of that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of lines in there that are going to be t-shirts. Um, 
Right. They're all gonna have fuck on them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. And like now she's singing. I want to just be like you, and so I keep saying it too. Um, okay, so. The Avon takedown was pretty epic and amazing, as was that flat tummy tea. What's the flat tummy, is flat tummy tea? The laxative milkshake. <laughs> That's what it is, they're laxatives, they're all laxatives. Yes. They make you shit a lot. You shit fire for about one day. <laughs> and then you don't shit again for five days. And if you keep taking it, because they want you to keep using it. And then if you keep taking it for long, ago, for long enough, you never shit again. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and it's so weird to me that these fucking teas are like in a pink shake and they look so pretty and like the very Photoshop celebrity is there who's got a personal chef and a dietitian and a, a very talented plastic surgeon. And, they, uh, and then they're pretending that their entire aesthetic is attributed to this fucking bullshit laxative tea that they're not drinking, that they haven't even taken out the fucking packet. And then they only ever show you drinking a sip of it, and then you know that as soon as that camera cuts, they're gonna spit that out, because they wouldn't put that poison in their mouth. I don't even know if they know what's in these teas. There's no health regulations around these products that are messing with your digestive system, they're messing with your thyroid, they're messing with your bowels, they're messing with your liver. Your body detoxes you, no tea can detox you. If you put a health warning of a deca like decaying lung on a packet of cigarettes, and you have health warnings on alcohol and age limits and you have to educate people about the side effects of what you're selling when you're selling a drug. You, why are celebrities and these fucking influencers not forced by law to warn their very young, very easily influenced, very insecure, constantly bombarded by shame because they're on social media, teenagers, what it is that they're about to buy and put into their little fragile growing bodies? A word, I'm in there, I agree. Um, I'm and I, quite upset. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna like say a little time. So she's going back. She's just like, and I'm, and. Oh, 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 it's. China. Very <laughs> upset. Yeah. Okay, so as a, as a mother of a 13 year old, who, my daughter lives in Urban Outfitters. And that is yet another distributor of the sicko tea. Not anymore, dude. Not since like someone got up and up in Twitter and made me aware of it. So I, think I am a terrorist, which yeah. unfortunately being South Asian is just unfortunate. <laughs> You're just gonna keep going, it's awesome. Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, no, I was saying absolutely nothing interesting. But thanks for the, for the 13 year old education because there are little, they're young. You assume something's vetted by a corporation uh, you're right, the uh, food and drug has nothing to do with this area. You can put diuretics, you can put laxatives into food. It's actually legal. It's just gross. And I think the way that you address um, your product knowledge is freaky deep, which might come from a journalism background. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also of, comes from a former anorexic background. That too. And seeing the damage that I it didn't did to my metabolism <laughs> and to my digestive system. I have never recovered because of this shit. Anything that, that any model or actress or... TV hosts were selling, saying that they were thin because of this thing. I remember like Oprah said the oolong tea, like, like 20 years ago, she was like, oolong tea made me lose weight. And so I drank like 40 cups of oolong tea a day, being 13 or 14 years old, didn't know how much caffeine there was in it. I was just like, <laughs> like <laughs> for the whole of my school studies, like we're so easily influenced. I did all this shit. I just, I messed my body up so much. I'm still only just starting to recover from this. And so are most actresses and most models, and they're not telling you about what they're going through. And shame on them, we have a responsibility. We, people look up to us. If you accept money to promote a product, and therefore you are telling someone that if you wanna be like me, if you wanna dress like me, if you wanna drink what I drink, then you are telling them to be like you, to emulate you. You have a responsibility to the consumer to make sure that you're not selling them a toxic substance or a toxic rhetoric. Yeah, and I think the rhetoric, of, as influencers have become, it's a business we work in, um, I think we work with extremely well-vetted, responsible, mm. productive, and very passionate uh, content creators. Um, but there's an, if you're getting paid to share something mm -hmm. as a celebrity, as a, you know, a content creator of ind who's independent... You become um, part of the corporation. Yeah, you do. And so you have to know what you're standing for there. Now, what do you feel about a celebrity who's not getting paid, who's just drinking Diet Coke or on Instagram or who is drinking, you know, shit making 
fire shit making tea. <laughs> like, if what you're if on they're Instagram not and if you've got thousands of followers and those followers are young and you have a platform, use it responsibly. Or just go to hell where you belong. <laughs> That's a t-shirt, for sure. Use it responsibly or just go to hell where you belong. <laughs> There's so many things that we could be talking about. There's so many things other than being thin or just like, just like, there's so many, not to, no, no, which is fine. Like, I love a good ass. Love a good ass, follow a lot of good asses on Instagram, male and female and LGBTQ, but we could add to those asses also conversations about the many things that we are all going through. Look at me too, look at Time's Up. Look how many of our friends finally opened up about old, abuses that they had gone through, abuse that they are currently going through. There's so much that we have to talk about. Again, I feel like we are being divided and conquered and made to envy each other and made to hate ourselves, just distracted, distracted, distracted. How are we ever going to be equal? How are we ever going to be the same as men and have the same power as men and the same respect as men if we don't respect ourselves? We are taught to not respect ourselves. So it's something you have to you have to learn how to do. I am learning how to love myself. For the first time since I was maybe nine years old, I have been anxious, I have had depression, I have been suicidal, I have been through it all. And it took me until I was 30 years old to finally realize that I was missing this whole life that I had. And actually this body was here taking me from A to B and I've spent so much time hating this body. We're so, I'm so lucky that this body kept me alive through everything and got me here today and helped me say fuck on this stage. <laughs> we're never taught to be grateful because if we're grateful, then we'll become content. And if we become content, we won't need to consume. The way I feel about advertising is that there's products that everyone wants. You know, there's something that everyone wants. Some women like makeup, some women don't like makeup. Whatever, sell the makeup. If you're selling a product that people want, that's fine. If you need to shame someone into thinking they need to buy your product, this is fucked and you are selling the wrong product and you are the wrong advertising agency. Woo! And that's the business we are in. We all, many of us do work in, we're media, we're funded by advertising and we look for the real, the real brands, the brands that are authentic and responsible, but this plague that you're describing that I think really does take the aggressive action you're talking about has become so insidious because the targeting that's available now, the girl who doesn't have an eating disorder yet, but, but based on some kinds, who she's liking online, based on what she posts, you can see it coming. Yeah. You can see the potential, the vulnerability. That's who I'm going to show a shake to. Yeah. And also like in the nineties, when I was coming up, I had to buy the four like $4 magazine to go and find the images. Or I, you know, had to search through almost like the dark web to find Thinspiration anorexic websites. Whereas nowadays, it's just everywhere. It's coming to you whether you want it or not. They know your age on Facebook. The algorithm sends it your way. And to adults who say, stop being so sensitive. People don't get, ad don't, people don't get influenced by adverts. I'm not talking to you. I'm not fighting for you. I'm fighting for the young people who... Are, who, are not, who are not as old as us, who aren't able to identify this stuff. Even some adults, even I don't always identify it. I am here to try and save the next generation from everything that I went through so they don't miss their lives the way that I have. And the idea that word. Um, I think the idea that we're not impacted by advertising is such an amazing crack because you can look at a product that has exactly the same ingredients next to another product on the shelf and the one with the ad budget is the one that you pick up. And the one with the biggest ad budget is the one that generates the majority of the penetration of US consumption. So it does take something aggressive to hold that, uh, to drive accountability because most of advertising that makes you feel shitty makes you want to buy something to fix that. We usually want to buy products that are going to fix us, not that are going to just, you know, uh, satisfy us. So do you intend to keep this? How, do you troll around for, like, bad companies? What are they you will doing? have to kill me to stop me. But no, I don't troll for the companies, actually, because I set up this company called iWay, and it's an inst it started with an Instagram account. It's at I underscore W-E-I-G-H. And uh, our community are full of people who are activists, and they bring us, it bring, they bring it to our attention when they find something toxic online. And when we have enough of the same people, if we have enough complaints about the same thing, then, well, Megan, who runs iWay with me, sets the bulldog 
on the company <laughs> or on the celebrity. Uh, and I go after people. I research what I'm doing first. I make sure that I know what I'm doing because obviously female fucking journalists will try and undermine me sometimes. Um, and I go, uh, I go after them. And I'm right. And that's why I win. Because I'm on the right side here. I want that t-shirt also. <laughs> I'm right. That's why I win. But I'm on the right, right side. I think, I think we're all really waking up. I think we've been in this haze and like men own the corporations and men own the magazines. Even if a woman's the editor, she's answering to a man at the top. Men own loads of the huge brands that we're being shamed into buying. So it's just like we're just being attacked by dicks, just like all, <laughs> just, uh, all the time. Just, <laughs> di just dicks. <laughs> just, I'm just... I'm so tired, I'm just like, just, 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 Aren't you all tired? <laughs> oh my God, that was so wonderful. Thank you for the, everything you just did. I'm right sorry now. about everything I've said and done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're rounding up, which sucks because you're fucking awesome. So, okay, so stand up in the audience if you're going to do something super aggressive that you were just inspired to do to end the patriarchal plague that's making us dislike each other in our bodies. Stand up. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I, that's a good standing. Oh, sis. Honestly, it's so true that divided we are conquered. And together we can really make change and really make history. And we've really seen that because of the, the movements that have been so incredible online. And so please join me and please join all of the amazing activists out there who are doing such great work. Don't turn a blind eye to people who don't have the same experience of you. That is, that is something that I have done. My feminism was not always intersectional, en intersectional enough. And I realized that just because I wasn't part of oppressing other people and people from different marginalized groups. You know, I'm from a marginalized groups, but there are so many others out there. Don't turn a blind eye to one another. Make sure that you are fighting with and for one another because until we are all free, none of us are free. So thanks right. for having me. Standing, and we're standing. <laughs>